So good morning everyone. So once again, welcome to BA99.1. Uh last week or sorry, two days ago we left off in terms of just talking about like what accounting is and why it's important in the form of like the pizza example, right? That at the end of the day, parang accounting is very important because it provides us a universal scorecard in terms of comparing the businesses that run the world. So to begin and just to set the tone for the pace of the semester, one of the things that I wanted to do at the start is really um, just a simple thought starters just to ground why we're doing this and why it's important to learn about accounting. And honestly, I'll be upfront with you in the sense that, you know, accounting may not save the world, but I really believe and I'm very passionate that it might be the key to changing it. So like what you've mentioned, a lot of people are saying in terms of the careers that they want to do or the lifestyles that they want uh, at the end uh, or after college. They want to run businesses, they want to go into marketing, they want to go into finance, even into law. But regardless of the different things that you'll end up doing, accounting will always be a special skill in terms of helping you grow in that respective field personally, but also making an impact in terms of like, you know, the communities that you work with, um, basically in the overall in terms of like the companies that you work for and also the companies that you help. So just to give you a statistic, um, basically... Uh, based on the Philippines, over 1.4 trillion pesos is lost to corruption. And therefore, now more than ever, it's super important that, you know, we really need financial transparency. But the point here is that in order for us to really know what the problem is with the country or what the problem is with the business and how to actually fix it and to create decisions that would actually lead to profits and lead to sustainability, the very first thing that we have to do is to become the next generation leaders. So in order for us to be those next generation leaders and redefine capitalism to not really focus just on the people, but also uh, not just to focus on the profits, but also on the people and the planet, before anything else, before we, you know, wage or contest a lot of things, the most important thing is that before you can even play the game, you need to know the rules. And for you to be able to know the rules, you have to know the language of business. And that is the core of accounting at its essence. That accounting is the language of business. And because of accounting, it's actually the basis of every decision made. So basically, in terms of accounting, it can give you the best uh, measure of the business of the activity. It can help you process information on the reports just so that you can audit it. If tama ba, what are the things or what are the weird things about it that you need to correct? And then ultimately, for you to, after analyzing, Ultimately, it serves for you to communicate to key decision makers so that they can actually make changes in terms of their businesses and their policies so that it's a win-win for everyone. It's a win for the business, it's a win for the customers, and a win for all over uh, in terms of like the stakeholders. So one thing I can assure you is that if you're looking for world-class accounting, then you're in the right place. So like what I mentioned, um, one of the things that I'm very proud of is that UP it's not just only one of the best in the country, but also one of the best in the world. So like what I mentioned, I'm currently taking masters and then there will come a time na marami kaming mga finance cases, may mga accounting cases. And then surprisingly, all of those, not naman to say para ano, pero it was, comes easy to me um, just because of all the frameworks and the foundation that UP has instilled to me. So um, like what I mentioned, I'm not gonna say that this is gonna be an easy class Actually, super matrabaho siya. But at the end of the day, what I hope is that regardless of what you're going to end up doing, when it comes to accounting, you're going to have world-class skills, world-class knowledge, and a world-class foundation. So with that said, um, just wanted to welcome you officially to BA99.1. So I know na parang it's a very grand setting. It's a more of the grand vision. But really bringing us back down in terms of like as a class perspective, I wanted to quickly talk about house rules lang and class policies. And essentially, I think yung pinaka-importante naman to you as a student, most importantly, would be the grading scheme. Uh, I think naman the question here, or parang when I was a student in UP is this, is how do I actually get an uno in this class or how do I actually maximize the learning? And to be completely transparent and not so that parang I'm not trying to scare you or anything, but just really to set your expectations in terms of like, how steep or parang how challenging the modules are or the quizzes and the exams. Um, to set your expectations, the average grade, the you know, based on parang my experiences or my observation, is that roughly it's around 
So that's around 73 to 76 in terms of numerical average. So bakit nangyayari yun? Because at the end of the day, um, accounting is a very rigorous course. Like what I've mentioned, it's a de departmental course. So you, all of you are taking the same quizzes, the same exams as your other BA students. And, all, and more importantly, your BAA counterparts also. So really, talagang this is an accounting focused in terms of like kahit anong major, we make sure na everyone is in the same playing field. So the reason why most likely nagkakaroon ng 2.5 and a lot of people actually in terms of like mid-sem, parang napapaisip sila whether they'll continue or parang they'll try to salvage their score is that at the end of the day, ultimately for 99.1, and I can't stress this enough, it's really gonna be the exams that will make or break it for you. So the good thing, so the last time I thought, I thought two exams lang sila. So they had two chances of parang really, you know, getting a high score and that. So parang it's really parang live or die in terms of those two exams. But luckily for us, I know parang as students, we want less um exams or parang long tests. But honestly, in terms of like a chance perspective, at least more, more chances tayo in terms of parang getting high. So for me, um, one thing that I want to stress is that the exams really will be the one that will make or break will make or break your accounting grade. So what do I mean by this? For me, for class participation, problem sets, I'm doing that not to parang para pahirapan kayo, but really to train you in order to answer the long exam. The quizzes also. Um, so to set expectations, every chapter will have a quiz. I, it's not going to be a surprise quiz. I'll announce it. We'll prepare for it. Don't worry. But I really want to make sure now we're properly paced. So sa practice, sa participation, more than focusing on parang getting the full points, it's really focus on knowing the solutions. Kulitin niyo ako, mag-consult kayo. Um, pag hindi malabo, pag malabo, parang um, always ask questions. Kung may mga frameworks, may mga solutions na hindi kayo get, shoot me an email, comment on the um, Let's have a discussion board. Two, sa quiz, don't be disheartened. Um, this is gonna be parang, this is so that you can benchmark ano yung mga potential questions um, that pwedeng lumabas dun sa long exam. Now, another thing is that it's gonna be probably time pressured. So talagang mastery is the pinaka-important or the pinaka-important bank that you'll have for this. So basically how it will work is that we'll have around three to four quizzes per module and then we'll have a long exam at the end. And then same, same, uh, so parang since three modules, 30% each. And then lastly, my 10% sa participation. So resource materials. Number one would be that all of the materials will be uploaded in Ovle. Um, and also I set up a master folder. Now for those of you na wala pang Ovle, um, please let me know. But super important na you have access as early as next week. So you are responsible for checking of regularly, but I'll, exp I'll explain naman ko ano yung mga common expectation. Um, and then please, um, please do not distribute the course materials outside of your class. Number two, so exams. So there are three exams, and this is the pinaka-important component, um, particularly if you parang, if medyo grade conscious kayo, would be that it's comprising 60% of your grade. So again, the dates are already set. October 22, November 26, and January 7. Please, please um, let me uh, know kung may conflict, but we're really gonna be conducted in person. Now, paano kung na-miss nyo? We will do a makeup exam, but um, based, given that it's a departmental, um, parang the department mentioned na unlike your typical accounting exams, number one, the makeup long exams, you can expect it to be difficult, parang mas, medyo mas mahirap. Or two, it could even go parang free format. So if you saw in the syllabus, parang the department is looking or exploring to the idea of parang having an oral exam or something, an oral component, um, a presentation component na will be quite more difficult than like a straightforward exercise na talagang yun yung piniprep namin for the quizzes. So bottom line, the reason why or the rationale behind that is we want everyone to have an equal chance of answering the exams on the dates that are provided. No, now, kung hindi talaga maiwasan, then we'll provide the makeup. But, um, you know, we'll just a note na, parang for, kasi may mga experiences rin na some students will purposely miss it, file an excuse so that they think it's easier. 
But what the, one of the things that we want to make sure or make clear is that you, you want to take, or if you want the best chances of succeeding, then take the exam on the dates provided. Number two, for class activities, don't worry. Honestly, for me, participation is just show me your effort and then I'll give you all the chances to get it perfect. So automatically, it may 10% na kayo of the grade. For me, as long as, number one, you submit all of your exercises on time and then that at least you have meaningful participation uh, once or twi- uh, at least twice every module. So ar- around six, um, sa- around six particip- participation points. So I'll be really strict when it comes to late submissions. Um, so basically, parang if you have one late submission, then you can expect na you won't get that ten percent. But if parang nakikita ko naman na parang nagsubmit kayo on time, um, and then even if parang um, I'll give you all the opportunity to get all of the participation or the problem sets correct. So I'll talk about that later. So please, wag nyo nang sayang yung ten percent. That's already yours to begin with. Um, the only time na it will be deducted is if you have any late submissions. So let's be mindful. I'll try to upload early in um, so that you'll be able to pace yourselves. Three, for quizzes, it's going to be face-to-face. Um, like what I've mentioned, I will announce it. I'll never surprise you. Most likely, it will be at the start of the class. Um, so quizzes will be given after each topic. And then I think another important thing you can't miss a quiz also. So parang kaya importante yung face-to-face class. So ano yung naging rule in terms of like the department? Now the rule is, um, if you miss a quiz and then you provide a valid excuse, um, basically you will get an opportunity pero the highest possible score na you'll be able to do in terms of that makeup is 75% of the lowest grade that you got for that whole module. So parang may three quizzes tayo sa module, you got 100 in one. So pag na-miss nyo yung isa, in terms of like the makeup, the highest that you can make up for that would be 75 kasi that's the 75 of your lowest grade so far. So please, again, the reason again for this would be to avoid students that purposely miss the quiz so that pwedeng may higher chances sila of parang um, generating um, you know, a higher score. So for the sake of fairness and para lang clearing expectations, exams, quizzes are face-to-face and then please um, take it if you can and then pwede na natin pag-usapan if there's really a valid reason. So again, um, the valid reason should always have an accompanying document um, or certificate um, from a professional. So these are just some of the valid reasons. So f- final notes would be cheating. Is of of course um basically one of the things that will be really strict about um in quizzes and also in exams. So please do it in your own work. For participation, I will talk about it. Uh, I think I don't prohibit naman from you asking your classmates for help. But I think it's to your own detriment naman if parang to copy niyo lang yung mga right answers and then you'll submit it just to get the ten percent participation points. Like what I mentioned, say niyo na yun. So I think ang pinaka-importante for participation or for problem sets is that you personally get it so that you'll be able to um, really prepare for your long exam. So final grades. So take notes of the release of the final grades. Um, there will be an objective period naman. And then um, deadline for dropping is December 1. Knock on wood, um, no one up here drops. So with that said, um, I hate to start of the day. Actually, I did, really wanted to do it uh, last time so that parang, we and we started a happier note. But one thing that I really wanted to start the class with is that given all of these policies and strict and uh parang strict rules, etc. etc. And then the parang real fact that you know the average grade talaga is 2.5, it hasn't deterred me from my ambition for this class. And my ambition for this particular set or for this particular class. Is that ang gusto ko talaga is that our target grade of everyone here in terms of this Zoom meeting and also in terms of my class, BA 99.1, WFR1, for this sim, is that I really want us to get a target grade of around 1. So 1 to 2, right? So at the very least, mga 2. And I'll talk to you about parang ano yung strategy. So number 1, um, yung 10% ng participation, like what I mentioned, I'll give you all the opportunities to get that perfect. So let's say 10% na yan. So, pag ginawa nyo properly yung problem sets, pag ginawa nyo yung exercises, you attend the concept lectures and the exercises, most likely, you'll do well in quizzes, right? So, 
the goal is roughly for quizzes dapat medyo perfect pero around mga 80% yung isa pag hirap talaga kayo in terms of like the steep learning curve but the idea here is that if you parang paulit-ulit yung problem sets and you do exercises outside you'll probably do well on your quizzes now for the exam parang the strategy here is to get at least mga around 17% to 15% and that will bump up your grade into parang the levels of 80s and essentially will hit our goal of 2 and above Right. So again, ang good thing naman sa accounting is ano siya eh, parang either you get it and you super get it or hindi mo siya gets. So lahat ng hindi mo gets nagpa-pile up. And then kaya, kaya sobrang bagsak yung iba, right? So wag tayong magpaiwan, right? So the thing that I want to highlight is that ipunin niyo na sa first module pa lang. So these are the coverage for each of the exams. So long exam 1 again is the pinaka-important because it will serve as your foundation in module 2 and module 3. So my request lang is, if in terms of the academic, and if there's one thing na tututukan nyo, please tutukan yung 99.1 in the first module. Siyempre sa module 2 and module 3. Pero yung before or October 22, give it your best effort. Kasi ayoko na start kayo na parang babagsak kayo sa long exam 1, and then you'll have to climb up na um for modules 2 and 3. So like what I mentioned, the exams time pressured it's already hard very challenging pero wag na natin lagyan pa ng emotional challenge na you know may iniisip kayo naghahabol etc etc so again ipunin na natin sa first module pa lang so with that said um in terms of our first exam it's going to be on October 22 and there's only 37 days i know it sounds a lot but in essence parang that's eight sessions so how it will work is that there will be four topics Today, we're starting with conceptual framework all the way until completing the accounting cycle. For me, if a flag ko na, I think out of the four topics, accrual accounting would be the hardest. But the first two, which is the conceptual framework and recording process, please master this. Kasi parang ito talaga yung magiging puhunan nyo um, all throughout the semesters. So how would our class dynamic go? Usually, we have two sessions per each of the topics. So first session, ako yung taya. So I have a concept lecture. Basically, you you don't have to, parang in terms of participation, very minimal lang. Um, but basically for the future concept lecture, so parang may concept lecture tayo for recording process. Kindly expect that before we end the conceptual framework, magkakaroon tayo ng quiz. But I'll give you an update naman kung tuloy ba yung quiz one, given na um hindi tayo makaka face to face um in the next few days. So, yun. And then, the second session will be all about solving exercises. So, in terms of our setup, basically, um, ang gusto ko right now na we experiment is classes are hybrid. So, we have our conceptual lecture days on Fridays. So, right now, <clears throat> which is basically dapat face-to-face. -face. And then, we have our exercises discussion on Wednesdays. I want that online. So, bakit gusto ko ng exercise online? Because I feel like pwede niyong mas matutukan dun sa screen. Um, and then yung lecture days, pwede kayong mag-consult sa akin after if merong hindi clear in terms of um, yung sa inexplain ko. So, with that, um, yun yung uh, rough setup but we'll assess after first module. Kung nag-request kayo na gusto niya lahat face-to-face, -face, then let's do that. Um, but the best is like 50% um, online, 50% face-to-face. Now, with that said, here are some free lecture tips. So, if mapapansin nyo, um, I really put a lot of effort in terms of creating our PowerPoint. So, please let me know kung masyadong maarte or parang it's too distracting. Uh, I will always love parang constructive criticism. But, the reason why inaartehan ko is so that it's friendly and parang hindi kayo parang mabore in terms of going through it. But aside from that, I want it to enhance your learnings. So, number one, if mapapansin nyo, mayroong mga parang text na parang double yung font. And the reason why, or may shadow, right? And the reason why is that those are theory concepts. So pag may nakita kayong ganito, please, 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 ako, hindi ako ganun kagaling. So what I do is I memorize. So pag may nakita kayong definition, memorize the keywords and the key concepts. So parang what is asset. Pag may lists and classification, gwari <laughs> ito, mayroong PI, uh, PIC OC. Memorize those and then how to classify them. And then comparisons. 
please memorize ano ba yung mga points of similarities, what are the points of differences. So again, sa theory parts of your quizzes, please i-perfect na natin. So by doing that, how, do, how can you do that? Memorize theory. Number two, solve, pro solve problems with me during class. So merong handout in the ovle. You can uh, check it out now. But I want you to get a piece of paper right now and then solve it with me now. Because honestly, it's all about knowing the process step by step. So get a piece of paper when I'm discussing, write the process on how I solve it, and then let's solve it that same way. If may you came up, discover na own formula, and then so be it. So second thing is, please know your formulas well. So assets is equal to liabilities plus equity. Kware yan yung ibibigay ko. Going back to the most common complaint, sabi ng mga tao, bakit hindi, parang bakit sobrang iba ng questions sa exams compared sa mga questions in class? Honestly, iba nga siya, but at the same time, the way you solve it will always be derived from the same concepts that we'll be discussing. So please, as much as possible, I'll break down concepts in terms of their implications and the equations. But please, automatic, try nyo na rin i-figure out for yourself. So kare, assets is equal to liabilities plus equity. Dapat alam nyo na rin how to get liabilities and how to get equity using this formula. So L liabilities is just basically assets minus equity. Equity is equal to assets minus liability. Right? Three, I want us to be framework focused, not answer driven. So super tempting, but particularly since uh, um, Uble, what I'm asking you sa, at the start is the check figures. The reason why I put check figures is that so that pag meron kayong hypothesis ko ano yung tama, you can plug it in and then you'll be uh, rewarded na. Tama ba yung answer nyo or mali? Kapag mali, you have to think about it again. So that when you finalize your answers, apulido na, na alam nyo yun yung tama even before class starts, right? So you take note of ano yung mga nahirapan kayo. So another request is, before our next session on Wednesday, kindly download the poly plug-in in your Zoom. I'll try to do that now. Pero let's have a parang, let's test it out. I want to hear your feedback kung maganda ba or not. So let's try out group learning. And then you can also give me a wish list. So parang basically, um, like what I've mentioned, aside from um, the lecture discussions, please answer Wigat exercises. If you're into Valix, please answer Valix exercises. And then parang may mga exercises kayo na gusto nyo pa-solve sa akin with me. Please send it to me. Um, I can answer it within two to three business days, depending on the number of requests that I receive. So please, um, give me an exercise wish list if you want me to solve pa, um, any other um, problems outside of class. So like what I mentioned for participation, how do you get ten percent? Honestly, just get a perfect in your problem set. So one of the things I wanna highlight. So you have to do two things every time there's a problem set. Number one is that you have to answer the check figures. So you will get a grade there. So you have unlimited attempts. The simplest and easiest way to get a 10 for each of the homeworks is if the perfect nyo check figures, then that's good. But for it to count, you have to submit a handwritten. So handwritten meaning paper talaga. So some people tend to want to use iPad. Um, but then parang my request, and sorry, I'll be a bit strict about this. It has to be paper. Um, ideally pa nga, yellow pad. The reason why is gusto ko kayo masanay mag-answer uh, manually. So why? Because sa exam, it's gonna be two to three hours long. Yellow pad lang yung kasama nyo. So gusto ko parang na, nagkakaroon kayo ng retention na, okay, this is how I solve it using a yellow pad. So please submit that scanned copy. So same yung deadline ng scanned copy of the handwritten and the scan uh, and then the check figure so unlimited attempts so my suggestion is i perfect yung muna yung check figures you can even use excel para mas mabilis and then once you've figured it out neatly write down step by step ano yung ginawa nyo, and then upload it now yung kware let's say talagang ginawa niyo yung best nyo, and then hindi kayo naka 10 i will discuss the exercises after if you want to make up for the parang lost points, then you can submit to me a new fresh hard copy na basically parang um, you did the exercises with me step by step. Submit it to me and then I will increase your grade and I'll make it perfect again. Now, 
to avoid na parang di basically parang irandom yung lang yung check figures and everything you should at least score at least 75% for me to give you full points for that. So, ang gusto ko lang behavior na i-avoid, and I'll be transparent, is magsasubmit ka, uh, you'll ask someone ano yung check figures, kukopya niya rin yung solution nila, and then, parang in the class, you'll just try to make up the points for it. Now, again, as much as I put like mga deterrents and mga requests, kaya lang talaga yung makakagawa ng personal commitment na um you'll be able to answer it on your own. Now, is it bad to collaborate with others kung may questions kayo? No. Pero ang only request ko is please, dapat alam nyo paano sagutin mag-isa. And if you need help with others, then go on a group work, okay lang. I'll allow that, particularly for this class, sa participation. Mag-usap kayo on how to answer it. Pero it's only to your own detriment if you're just gonna resort to mere copying. So please, focus on the process and the solution. Kasi at the end of the day, mag-isa lang kayo sa exams. And yun lang talaga yung um, pakialam ko. I really want you to do well in the exams. Kasi if you do well in the exams, you'll get a high grade in my class. So lastly, the class pace is fast but reviewable. So if it's still too fast, please thoroughly read the, read the book before the lecture. Another thing is, I apologize, pero since concept lectures, I will extend um, so that until matapos ko, so that I'll be able to give you enough bullets in order to, for you to answer your exercises. So that ends um the super pinaka annoying part of housekeeping. Um are there any questions? If not, um kindly thumbs up so that we can begin officially begin our first concept lecture um uh, when it comes to concept Okay. Okay. Perfect. So okay, enough now of all of those admin stuff. Like what I've mentioned, I'm very excited for this class. Um it's a clean slate, wala pang masamang nangyari. So let's start strong and let's start with the very first lecture about conceptual framework. And it's all about um, knowing or being experts at the different accounting principles. So basically the idea here is that in terms of the lecture overview, um, we're gonna follow with the BAA framework. So the first two parts is basically one, we want to broaden our understanding of the business context. context. So I will explain and define what accounting is, sino ba yung mga different users and associated with accounting. Second, in terms of um, being masters, in terms of accounting for transactions, I'll talk about the building blocks of accounting, um, state the accounting equation, and then finally, the last step is to analyze the financial statements um, so that we can analyze the effects of the business transactions. So for me, the three major things that you have to learn today would be, number one, theory concepts about accounting. So practically, magagamit nyo to in terms of understanding accounting, but also for theory questions, for quizzes and exams. Number two, super pinaka-important take to learn today is the accounting equation and the advanced and the basic transaction analysis. And then number three, I just want you to be familiar with the process of creating financial statements. So those are our three sub-goals today in the next hour, right? So number one, let's start off. Ano nga ba yung accounting? So what is accounting? Strictly, right? And honestly, accounting simply means that it's a financial information system that does three things. It identifies, it records, and communicates economic events of, end, of the entity, meaning the business, to the end users. So again, it has three components. It identifies, it records, and it communicates. So in essence, lahat ng gagawin natin this semester, lahat ng pinaghirapan ng mga students, it all boils down into three major things. You identify, so which transactions will you record? So a lot of things happen to businesses. There's a lot of events. So the first step is for you to understand which are the events that I need to record and which ones are not important in terms of the accounting lens. Now, so now that you've been able to identify ano yung mga economic events, the next step is dapat master nyo yung how to journal entry or how to classify um, the economic events, and to actually summarize these journal entries into posts and into ledgers. So that ultimately, what you can do is that after na record yung lahat ng important events, you'll be, at the end of the day, you'll be able to communicate and analyze the business so that you can prepare the reports, you can interpret for the different users. So now that we're clear in terms of like the overall framework that is accounting, let's go to step one. So identify so in essence, like what I've mentioned, marami naman nangyayari in a business. And for us, 
ang framework na gagamitin natin kung i-record ba natin or hindi is we ask ourselves, is it an economic event? If it's an economic event, we record. If it's not an economic event, that's a personal event, we don't record. So the question is, what is an economic event? Basically, an economic event are basically two things. It's a consequential event that happens to a business entity that usually it comprises a transaction that are measurable in monetary units. In contrast, a personal event is either one, completely unrelated to the business, so parang it doesn't really impact the business, and or it's not quantifiable in monetary units. So again, if it's an economic event, we record. If it's a personal event, we don't record. So let's say, uh, let's take an example. Let's say I'm a bike owner, uh, a business owner, and napapansin ko, oh, dumadami yung Perigon, uh, and parang, I want to make my own bike studio. So an example of an economic event is that a business owner buys 50 spin bikes for their bike studio at 54,000 each. So number one, Consequential ba siya to my spin business? Yes, the spin bikes will be used for the business. Number two, meron bang, is it measurable in monetary units? Yes. And given that those are two conditions that are fulfilled, this is an economic event. In contrast, the business owner buys a spin bike for his gains using their own money. So okay, let's break it down. Okay, may spin studio ka, pero bumili siya ng spin bike. Pero... He use he wants to use the spin bike for his um for his or her gains. So number one, hindi siya related dun sa business, right? And then di na rin naman niya ginamit yung pera ng business. And then three, walang monetary unit rin associated. So this is really more of um completely unrelated to the business that he wants. So kung ano yung personal ambition niya, it's separate from what the economic entity wants to achieve. Therefore, it's a personal event. Another example, the bike studio earned 100,000 in revenues from increased membership. So again, consequential to the business, measurable in monetary units, 100,000. Yung isa, the business owner firmly believes that they are the most hype studio in existence. Okay, medyo related to the business because it's a subjective way of looking at how he runs his business. But at the same time, you can't really quantify like being hype, right? Or parang being the best or the, being the most popular, wala siyang monetary units attached to it. And that's why it's a personal event. We don't record those, right? So with that said, that's basically how you identify. Economic event pa siya or not. Next step is, okay, na-identify na natin. We know that um, earning revenues is an economic event. The next step is we have to record it in a standard way. And how you usually record it is through what we call a journal entry. So next lecture pa natin, mag-deep dive in terms of journal entries. But basically, from this economic event, we make a journal entry, debit cash 100,000, credit sales revenue 100,000. Basically recording it lang so that um, you'll be able to track of all the economic events. Then eventually, after a month, sobrang dami mo ng economic events. So sobrang dami mo ring journal entries. So all of these are journal entries, meaning are numerous economic events. The last step, is for you to summarize and condense all of those information into something that you can communicate with. So uh, basically, in the form of financial statements. So income statement, statement of changes in owner equity, balance sheet. So ang purpose lang talaga, or end goal ng accounting, accountants, is to one, be able to create these reports called the financial statements, and two, for you to be able to analyze. And I think yun yung pinaka-importante. Dapat may makuha kayong information by just reading their financial statement. So in a nutshell, that's basically accounting. Yun lang yung gagawin natin for the rest of the sim. Identify, record, communicate. And honestly, ang pinaka-misconception is, is it accounting just bookkeeping, right? So what's the difference between accounting and bookkeeping? Well, bookkeeping, honestly, pertains lang to one part of the accounting cycle. And that's the recording process. So pag narinig nyo yung bookkeeping, it only talks about recording or creating journal entries. So again, accounting is not equal to bookkeeping. Bookkeeping just talks about the recording part of the accounting process. So itong part lang na to. So it's not one and the same.
So the next question is, why do we need to learn accounting, right? So I think, in a way, I already glimpsed the answer through the introduction. But at the end of the day, accounting is the language of business. It standardizes the way we analyze financial information. And therefore, it's the basis of every decision made. Whether you're an investor looking to assess kung maganda ba tong company na to or not, you're a manager trying to de or derive, paano ko ba improve yung profitability ko? Do I decrease expenses? Do I increase revenues? Etc. Etc. So, accounting is the language of business. And the reason why it's able to do that is because at the end of the day, accounting is a universal scorecard. It's conceptually consistent. It treats the similar transactions the same way. And it's a very objective way to assess and compare businesses. Now, the thing that I want to highlight is that accounting is only as useful as the information it presents. Given that we're talking about financial information and that the data, parang merong in my one of my finance class, merong concept called garbage in, garbage out. Meaning, pag pangit yung inputs mo, then pangit yung output mo. Gahit gano ka pa kagaling na accountant, kung pangit yung inputs mo or yung information that you use, and then hindi maganda yung mga reports na you'll be able to come up with. And in order for us to make sure, given that we have different stakeholders relying on us to help them make decisions, the first question that we want to ask is, is this US information useful? And to help us, there are actually two fundamental qualitative characteristics of information and four enhancing qualitative characteristics. So please memorize this. So what is the difference between fundamental and enhancing? Yung fundamental, it's essential, it's required that information should be relevant and reliable. For enhancing, basically, ina-enhance lang niya yung quality of information. So, primary is fundamental, secondary lang yung enhancing. So, what are the two fundamental? It must be relevant and also it must be reliable. So, relevant, is it capable of making a difference in decisions? Meaning, one, does it have predictive value? Meaning, once you have that information, can you forecast what's going to happen in the future? So, does it have predictive value? Or, does it have confirmatory value? Meaning, nagkaroon ka ng performance for the month, will it be able to confirm kung maganda ba yung profits nyo, maganda ba yung revenues nyo, uh, tama ba yung pag-account? So, will it have predictive value and confirmatory value? Now, basically, for relevant, the concept or the core concept that people really associate this with is what we call materiality. So in terms of relevance, relevance, you just ask yourself, is this information material? Meaning, kapag inumit ko ba or iniba ko yung statement, mag-iiba ba yung end decision ng user? So I, for me, the classic example here is UP. What is the material information about UP? Free tuition. If I if parang pagka-enroll niyo sinabi sa inyo na parang oh sorry parang hindi pala free yung tuition ng UP parang it's the same as you know Ateneo La Salle UST um and the etc etc would have that changed your decision I think for a lot of us yes definitely therefore it's a material information right na tuition mag-iba yung decision mo if it's free tuition mas mataas yung likelihood na you'll go for it if it's not and it's just as expensive probably you'll still go for it but then to a lot of other people, that would be a material information. So that means it's relevant. Okay. Number two, aside from being relevant, it has to be reliable. Meaning, can I trust this information? And this is very important given that, you know, today's world, sobrang dami ng fake news, sobrang dami. It's so easy to manipulate what's the truth. So relevant and it has to be reliable. And how do you know it's reliable? Number one, is, is it complete? Meaning, it, does it have all the necessary information? Number two, is it neutral? Meaning, it's free from bias. Hindi siya manipulate. Number three, is it free of error? Meaning, wala siyang pagkakamali, pulido siya, tama siya. Um, it's, uh, it's reliable in terms of like following all the accounting standards. So the concept associated to this is faithful representation. Meaning, as the best of the capabilities, it follows all the standards and it was not manipulated, it's complete, and it's free from error. So again, what are two fundamental? It has to be relevant, so that's material, and it has to be reliable. It has to be faithfully represented. Now, how do we increase the quality of these informations, right? 
through the different enhancing qualities. And for me, for me, para para ma memorize ko to, I think V cut like the chips if you're into like yung mga snacks. V cut. First, it has to be verifiable. Meaning, if nagtanong ako ng different knowledgeable experts na expert one, expert two, expert three, expert one hundred, if they can reach a consensus na ah, parang tama and relevant and reliable information, then that's verifiable. Number two, it has to be comparable. Meaning, it's consistent in terms of the accounting method. In year one, may accounting method ka na finalo. In year two, dapat same accounting method. So you understand the similarities and the difference. Kasi mahirap i-compare ang accounting method 1, accounting method 2. Hindi na siya comparable. That's apples to oranges. Dapat apples to apples. Number three is that it has to be understandable. It has to be clear and concise. But in terms of the point of view, syempre pag pinakitaan ko ng financial statement yung uh, three-year-old pamangkin ko, she wouldn't be able to understand, right? So ang lens natin is, it has to be understandable for those that have reasonable knowledge in the field, meaning business people, um, pe the end users, the investors, or the consumers. So those who have reasonable knowledge. And then lastly, is that it should be timely. So no matter how important or how good your information is, if it's not timely, then it's not really that good of an information. So it should be available in time to influence the decision. So that ends... Um, basically, the core introduction for accounting. Um, do you have any questions for this? Kindly thumbs up if everything's clear. Um, yeah. Okay, perfect. So now that we've defined accounting, the next question is, who actually uses accounting data? Right? So, ano ba yung mga uses and ano ba yung mga activities? Honestly, in terms of <coughs> sino yung mga gumagamit ng accounting, there are different types of organizations. You have your sole prop, you have your partnership, and you have your corporation. And they have a lot of differences, right? It, they have differences in terms of like the number of owners, the number of capital that you can generate, and also the liability in terms of parang sino yung mga respective owners. So I think out of all of this, ang pinaka-familiar tayo would be corporations, so yung mga FMCGs, mga SMEs, etc. Cetera, et cetera. But then, um, you have your sole prop and your partnership. So sole prop, let's say, ako parang nakita ko sa news na super uso pala magkaroon ng lato, yung lato-lato ba yun or something like that. And then I realize, oh, I wanna start my own lato-lato empire. So mag basically, magpaproduce ako in my house ng parang, you know, yung string and toy. So basically, when I start that business, that will be a sole proprietorship. If I get a partner and then we form a partnership agreement, then we'll become a partnership. So those are the three types of organizations. So now, let's take note of the differences. First, number of owners. So sole prop, as the name suggests, one yung owner. So partnership, it's two or more that entered into a partnership agreement. So corporation, it should be at least five. Pero my asterisk because there's one such a thing as one-person corporation. So kindly take note lang na generally, it's at least five. In terms of capital, um, it's limited sa so sole prop. Meaning, kware ako lang. So, basically, in my lato-lato empire, I can only use my savings. So, yung mga kinita ko sa UP, yung kinita ko for my full-time job, my other investments. Yun lang yung capital na raise ko in order to fund that business. Compared to sa so partnership, kung kumuha pa ka na isang person, edi at least two life savings na, right? And then, pag corporation, basically, you can start selling shares, right? So, basically, um, in terms of like the capital, um, marame kang pwedeng ma-raise na money for this. In terms of liability, sa sole prop, um, let's say, gumawa nga ako ng lato-lato. And then, syempre, wala na, hindi naman ako engineering or whatever. So basically, it's like, tinali ko lang sa string. And then, knock on wood, parang biglang napigtas yung string and then it hit the person and then nagka-injury sila. And then they did a full-blown in investigation they saw na hindi pala industry standard yung ginamit kong string. Mm -hmm that caused an injury. So, hinablan nila ako. So, basically, because I'm a sole prop, my liability does not extend to how much my lato-lato empire was able to create. Habulin nila yung bahay ko, habulin nila yung kotse ko. So, kung ganun karami yung, <clears throat> kung ganun kalaki yung parang financial damages, my liability will extend to all of my personal saving, savings. Now, sa partnership, a uh, benefit of entering a partnership is that there are two kinds of partners. You have a general partner and a limited partner. So, si general partner, siya yung mag-run ng day-to-day -day business. And then usually, si 
limited partner, siya lang yung nag-infuse ng capital. So, kare, in- instead of being a sole prop, I asked my girlfriend to enter a partnership agreement with me. Sabi ko, sabihin ko sa kanya, mag-invest ka lang ng uh, 100,000 and then ako na bagahala mag-run and then ang setup natin is general partner ako and then limited partner ka. So, ang mangyayari is, kware, hinabla kami as a partnership. Ako, as a general partner, hahabulin pa rin lahat ng personal savings ko. But my girlfriend, in terms of like being a limited partner, hanggang dun lang sa investment niya, yung habol, right? So that's the basically the limited part of that liability. And then li- lastly, for a corporation, if you're a stock uh, shareholder, basically yung losses mo lang naman is limited to your investment. So other important things to take note lang is basically in terms of management, Simple sa sole prop, it's a bit more complex sa partnership and then sa corporation, separate yung ownership. Siyempre, mas madaming regulations for a corporation than a sole prop. And then, in terms of the life, um, perpetual yung sa corporation. So, now that we know, okay, so basically businesses in general use accounting. But specifically, who in those businesses actually use accounting data? And honestly, in order to answer that question, we can break it, da- br- break it down into two types of users. You have your internal users and your external users. Right? So, sobrang importante nito. So much so that there are two branches of accounting. For internal users, you have your managerial accounting. And then for external, you have your financial accounting. Again, internal managerial accounting. External financial accounting. So, what's the difference? Let's focus muna on managerial accounting. For managerial accounting, the major goal is for you to make decisions that will help plan, organize, and run the business. So, it's really more about creating internal reports. So, compare nyo yung mga performance nyo, ipoproject nyo kung ano yung income, ipoforecast mo kung ano yung cash needed. All of those are internal uses. Internal meaning within the company, right? So, all of those things will be under managerial accounting. On the other hand, you have your financial accounting. These are for your external users. For your investors, so parang sila ang decision nila is magbabay, maghold, or magsasell ba ako ng ownership. For creditors, i-evaluate nila. Maganda ba yung financial um, condition nila? Pwede ka ba tong grantan ng loan? Government agencies, nag-reg, nag-follow ba to ng rules? Customers, Maganda ba yung performance ng company? Labor unions, mayroon ba tong liquidity to be, to be able to play for, pay for its employees? So lahat yun, external users. So again, internal managerial accounting, external financial accounting. So with that said, let's do a little test. Number one, um, please comment sa chat um, kung internal or external. Number one, Investor, is the business earning satisfactory income? Is that internal or external? Kindly type in sa chat. Thank you. Okay. So, I see... Internal, internal. Okay, so mixed. Um, But, thank you for the answers. But, generally, that's external, right? So, investor is an external in the sense that um they're looking at ano ba yung um kung worth it ba na mag-invest doon right next um next is bank will the company be able to pay its debt as it falls due um external internal or internal okay so medyo mas unanimous external cfo is the cash sufficient to pay the bills? External or internal? Okay, good. So internal. Correct. And then BIR. Are we paying the correct taxes? Yan, favorite yan ng BIR. External. Okay. And then finally, marketing manager. Which product line is the most profitable? Um. Okay. Thank you so much, everyone. So external, external, internal, internal. All right. So, pag, if ever lumabas, I'm not sure kung lalabas. But, basically, tingnan nyo lang kung sino yung nagbe-make ng decision. And then, if it's something to do within the company, then that's internal. If it's something that, you know, people have a decision outside the company, that's external. So, now, we finally go into the last step, which is the building blocks. So, right now, ang ginagawa ko is binubuo ko yung foundation natin. 
And for the foundation to be solid, we have to know the four building blocks of accounting. So that would be these four. Ethics, your GAAP, your measurement principles, and the different assumptions you will have. So first, ethics. So quickly, I'll just talk about um, the code of ethics. So basically, in accounting, it's really all about honor and excellence, naman, right? So for code of ethics, basically, the we have this thing called code of ethics for professional accountants in the Philippines. And basically, ang gusto lang nilang gawin is they want to ensure that CPAs should act in the public interest. And to do that, they identified five of the things that they should have. And my parang memorizing technique for this is pick OC. Professional behavior, integrity, confidentiality, objectivity, and professional competence in due care. So professional behavior basically means lang na nagko-comply sila with the relevant laws and regulation. Integrity is straightforward sila, honest, they don't manipulate. Confidentiality, they don't disclose sensitive financial information without profit, proper security. So if you're familiar with insider trading, basically parang pare you're doing a deal. And then parang malalaman mo, uy, mag-IPO pala to um, with this other company that's already public. Uy, mag-invest ka dyan kasi yaman tayo. That's illegal um, to a certain extent. Um, to Even to your relatives kasi bawal yung insider trading. That talks about confidentiality. It's objective, meaning it's fair, no bias, um, walang conflict of interest whenever you either make the statement or assess or analyze the information. And then, they have competence and due care. So they make sure that they enhance their knowledge, they do their problem sets, they take their exams, so that they're always going to be world-class accountants. So now, the next question is, palagi yung sinasabi, it's a universal scorecard, um, it's very objective, it's completely um, consistent, ganyan, ganyan. And the reason why is that, like what I mentioned, unlike pizzas that doesn't have a pizza world council, accounting has standard-setting bodies. For the U.S., and the reason why I say U.S. is because sa way gaap yung ginagamit, you have what you call the standards. So standards are important. Yung name ng standards is generally accepted accounting principles or gaap. So it standardizes the rules for accounting in the U.S. So what does it have? It has the principles, the rules, and the standards. And so that, it ensure niya na across the different industries, across everyone that will use the information, it uses the appropriate measurement, the processing, and the communication of the financial information. So that apples to apples siya when you compare specific instances. Now, looking at it from the world view, what are the standard setting bodies? First is you have your IASB and your International Accounting Standards Board. So yun yung board nila. Ang ginagawa ng IASB is gumagawa sila ng IFRS. Uh, gumagawa sila ng IFRS which is in, uh, International Financial Reporting Standard. So, yan yung mga iniiyakan ng mga third year sa BAA now. So, from GAAP, na yun yung kinukuha natin now, kasi general lang naman, they to uh, IFRS, so International Financial Reporting Standard. So, syempre, we have our local counterpart. So, if it's IASB to IFRS, we have our FRSC to our PFRS. So, basically, local versions lang, Financial Reporting Standards Council or Standard Setting Body, they create our standards. So you also have your interpretation. So you have your IFRIC and your PIC, but basically they also do your um, interpretations. Now, in terms of um, PFRS or in the Philippine context, which standards do we follow? So that's the question. My standard setting body. Pa anong standards yung follow mo as a Philippine business? The, que the answer to that is it depends kung gano kalaki yung entity mo. If you're a large entity, then you will do the full version of your PFRS. But if you're a micro-entity, then you can do a sm the small version of the PFRS so or the income tax basis. So, pababa lang yan. So, if large entity ka, meaning you're publicly accountable entities, kailangan full set of standards. Kapag medium entity ka, you have a choice. Kung gusto mo magpakamages, PFRS full. Kapag hindi, you can just do the PFRS for SMEs. And then, so small entities, they have three choices. PFRS full, PFRS SME, PFRS small. There. So the last two building blocks is measurement principles. So ako, papasadahan ko lang to. 
just because I don't want you to get overwhelmed. But the idea lang here is that we measure all the accounting items the same way, consistently. Now, there are different ways to measure, so I just want you to be familiar. So you have your historical cost, meaning measure mo siya kung magkano mo siya nakuha o nabili. So for example, bumili ako ng lupa, and it cost 7 million. 10 years from now, that's probably, uh, 100 years from now, that's probably gonna be like 50 million, let's say. If I'm gonna measure it at the historical cost principle, I should measure it at 7 million, not at its current cost of like 50 million. Yun yung fair value principle. Na you record the ano, the the property at general market value, meaning at the price that would be received to sell an asset or the price that would be paid to settle a liability. So please, for me, please memorize lang ito. What is a fair value? It's a arm's length transaction the price that would be received to sell an asset and the price that would be paid to settle a liability. And then, you have your current value. Na you have different. So, fair value, current cost, and present value. So, um, again, pinapasadahan ko lang because I think these are just important things to take note of where I don't want you to get scared of right now. So, just know that there are different measurement bases. The last step is we have key assumptions or building blocks wherein um basically ang idea nito is that regardless of what's happening ito yung mga key assumptions across all businesses uh, on which financial accounting measurement is based so again i expect you also to be uh, to memorize also all these key assumptions number and to understand what it means so number 1 going concern assumption so number 1 ang idea lang nito is that Financial statements are prepared that the entity will continue in operation for the foreseeable future. Meaning, kapag gumagawa tayo ng financial statements, ang sinasabi natin is, don't worry, parang hindi ito magbabankrupt and magkaklose next week. Right? Parang the idea here is that the entity will be keep on going in the foreseeable future. Kaya siya, going concerns. Second assumption is monetary unit. So the assumption requires that only transaction data that can be expressed in terms of money be include, included in the accounting record. So, going back to our spin bike example, the bike studio is the most hype thing ever. Wala naman yung monetary unit, right? And that's why we don't record it. Kasi wala tayong pwedeng ma-attach na quantifiable amount in terms of that particular information. Third, and I think one of the more important things to understand right now is economic entity. Meaning, dapat separate yung business dun sa owner. So, let's go back to my example na Lato Lato Empire. I make my Lato Lato Empire, there's two entities there. The economic entity of the business and then me as a person. My activities should be kept separate and distinct from my business. Right? So, magkaiba si Lato Lato Empire, magkaiba rin yung funds ko. Now, hindi may iwasan na parang mag infuse ako ng cash doon sa business ko, kukuha ko ng pera doon, pero yun lang yung mga interactions that we need to record. The infusions or the drawings or kumuha ako ng pera from the business. So with that said, let's do a quick example. A marketing director purchases a MacBook to edit family videos using their own money. Is this something na we record or not? Correct. So, hindi natin yung record. Because number one, they use their own money in its personal use. Second, an owner prepays fire insurance for their restaurant business. Is that something we record or not? Correct. So, we record that kasi it's important to the economic entity. A mid-level employee was fired. Is that something we record or not? Okay, I'm happy na. Okay, that's good. So, ito, it's about the business, pero we go to the monetary unit. Wala siyang monetary impact, right? An entrepreneur took out money from his TikTok clothing business to buy personal branded clothes. So, may TikTok clothing business siya. He got money so that he can buy personal branded clothes. Record or not? Record. And then lastly, you took out a loan from the bank for a bakery business. Record or not? record. 
thank you so much everyone appreciate um uh, so good so i hope everything's clear so the last thing is the time period meaning that the accounting practices and methods used by the company should be maintained reported for specific periods of time so the idea lang here is that consistent dapat yung time period mo from year to year um I will talk about this more in detail in uh, the third topic, which is accruals and deferrals. But just kindly take note that, again, there are four assumptions. Going concern, meaning hindi maba bankrupt in the, in the next future. Number two, monetary unit. It has to be quantifiable uh, in terms of monetary unit. Three, it should be economic entity. And I think ito yung pinaka important. But siyempre, they're all equally important. It should be separate. The business should be separate from the owner. And then four, it has to be um, the time period, right? So with that said, we are able to do the first part, which is basically, ito lang lahat ng theory things that you have to know. So in the next 30 minutes, the last thing that we'll do is two things. We'll talk about the accounting equation, and we will have our very first case study called Macy Consulting to really emphasize yung advanced transaction analysis. Right. So before I proceed, are there any questions or um clarifications? If not, thumbs up. Um, if everything's okay. <clears throat> okay. Good. Ah, Mary, one question. Sorry, sir. Kala ko thumbs up to you. Ay, okay, okay. Okay, lang. No worries. So with that said. Let's now go to the accounting equation. So if there's one thing now, what please what you kakalimutan, it's the accounting equation. Right? And for me, para mas madali nyo maalala and talagang ma-enshrine ma sa inyo the concept of the accounting equation, I want you to think or remember this race. Everything that the business owns has to come from somewhere. Either it's put up by the owner or lent by a third party. So in a more personal example, everything that you know, everything that makes you who you are is either thanks to the fruits of your own labor, so mga pinaghirapan mo, yung mga skills na natutunan mo, or you got it from someone else. It was lent by your, you know, you got it from your family, you got it from your friends. Not that they're asking anything in return, or but anything that makes up your own personal assets. Dalawa lang yung sources niyan. Either pinondar mo mag -isa, or you ask help from someone outside. Right? And basically, that's the idea. A business, similar to a person, has assets. And assets are basically everything that the business owns. Now, that asset, it has to come from somewhere. Either it's put up by the owners, meaning, kwari ako, in my lato-lato empire, my assets, let's say, is 100,000. Let's talk about money lang muna. Assets ng Lato Lato Empire ko is 100,000. That 100,000 has to come from somewhere. One, it can come from my equity. So, nag-invest ako ng 50,000, let's say. Or, it could be a liability. It could be the, the, the other 50,000 hinaram ko sa banko. Right? So, now, my assets of 100,000 has to come from somewhere. Either it's an equity nag-invest ako ng 50,000, or umutang ako, which is a liability, I owe that to the bank, or owe to a third party, and that's what makes up my asset. So because of this, our God equation, and the only important equation, is that assets should equal liabilities plus equity. Everything that the business owns, assets, has to come from somewhere. Either it's lent by a third party, liability, or put up by the, uh, by the owner, equity. So, one of the things that you should always make sure is that assets is equal to liabilities plus equity. It has to balance like a scale. 100,000 assets is equal to the 50 liability plus 50 equity. Assets should always equal to the sums of liabilities plus equity. So, let's break down the formula. Assets is equal to... Uh, Liabilities plus equity. So liabilities is assets minus equity. Equity is asset minus liability. So let's do an example. First number. What is the asset that's missing? Kindly comment your answer. Or do it with me. Here. 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 
yeah then no? okay game so basically assets plus liabilities is equal to equity um assets is missing so it has to sum to the equal of liabilities equity so that's 25 plus 75 is 100,000 right there next yung equity naman yung na 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 miss so we know that the total is assets of 450,000 so now yung alam natin yung liability so ang gagawin natin is 450,000 minus the liability the residual equity is 355,000 next we have we have um 38 yung assets yung equity is 30,000. So, ano yung missing? 38 minus 30 is 8,000. And then lastly, and I think this is the pinaka-importante just so that you're, I'm sure na you'll be able to understand. Yung 50,000 lang yung binigay. The equity is two times more than the liability. So, dito papasok yung reading comprehension. What is your liability then? If equity is two times more than the liability, what is your liability? And then eventually, what is your asset? Correct. Yes. So 25. And then now that alam natin liability, liability plus equity is 75,000. Asset is 75. So simple. Okay. Medyo nakakahinga pa tayo. Right? Assets is equal to liabilities. Now, medyo pahirapan natin ng onte. Let's define them muna. Right? So, um, I will skip the definitions, but I want you to know lang um, that an asset is a resource controlled by the entity as a result of a past event and from which future economic benefits are expected to flow to the entity. Meaning, is cash. So cash is an asset because it's a legal tender or coins that can be used to exchange goods. So we like cash. So it's your favorite birthday gift and Christmas gift natin. And ano yung benefit? Or any future economic benefit that you can buy anything you want with it, right? So other assets would be receivables. So any receivables, amount of money owed to you. So for example, nagpautang ako ng fifty pesos sa friend ko. Yung fifty pesos na bigay niya sa akin, sa, na bigay ko sa kanya. So now I have an accounts receivable wherein I'm expected to receive fifty pesos from him. So it's still an asset. So ano yung future benefit? Yung utang niya sa akin, eventually, ma-turn ko into cash. So, if may makita kayong term na receivable, ang naiisip niya lang dito is, nag may utang sa yung, yung tao. Another example is, nagbenta ko ng lato-lato for 100 pesos. Binigay ko sa kanya, hindi pa siya nagbabayad. Since hindi pa siya nagbabayad, I have a receivable of 100 pesos. The others are pretty self-explanatory. Your supplies, basically, mga staplers, etc., etc. You use it to conduct the business. Your inventory, yung lato-lato, is some the goods or the products that the company sells. So the benefit is you sell your lato lato or you sell your inventory to generate cash. Prepaid expenses, pare, nag -pre prepay ako ng six months of rent. The benefit is I can use that space in order for me to conduct the business that I can then turn into cash. Yung pag run ko ng business. And then equipment, land building machine equipment, you use the operate, you use it to operate to generate cash. So honestly, all of it. Your future economic benefit niya is some way, somehow, you'll be able to use them to generate cash. Either directly or because of that equipment or because of that rental, you'll be able to generate future economic benefits that are expected to flow to the entity. On the other hand, liabilities are a present obligation arising from past event which expects to result in an outflow. So, kung sa assets it's an inflow, magkakaroon ka ng benefit. Sa liabilities, you have a present obligation that will result into an outflow. Accounts payable is just the reverse of receivables, meaning may utang ka to someone else. So ano yung obligation in the outflow? You have to pay yung utang. So umutang ako sa banko ng 50,000. Um, technically, that's a notes payable, but that's simply a similar to accounts payable. Pag umutang ako sa mommy ko instead, accounts payable yun. I have an accounts payable of 50,000 to my mom. Accrued expenses are basically, kware, nagtayo ko ng lato lato empire. I hired my workers. And then, syempre, may monthly salary sila. 
syempre magkatrabaho muna sila and then at the end of the month, doon ko sila babayaran. Now, meron akong salaries payable. Nagduwa na sila ng trabaho, so my obligation is I have to pay them for the work that they've already done. So, notes payable, basically parang humingi ka lang ng pera sa bank. And then interest payable is basically pag may interest lang. So for example, humingi ako ng 100 pesos sa friend ko and then medyo pupal siya. Sabi niya, 10% interest. So, rather than um parang paying him 100, magkakaroon ako ng 100 na accounts payable and then 10 pesos na interest payable. Kasi 10% of 100 is 10. So, 110 na ibabayad ko sa kanya. So, interest payable is yun. So, it's a present obligation with a potential outflow. So, that ends liability. The last step is equity. So, equity is the residual interest. What does that mean? Sounds fancy, but literally, it's assets minus liabilities equal to equity. Lahat ng wala kang utang, so that means that is your equity. Kindly thumbs up if everything is clear so far. Okay. That's good. Okay. So clear tayo dito. So ito, definitions. Request ko, memorize nyo lang yung keywords. Economic uh, inflow, etc., etc., outflow, present obligation, residual interest. Lahat ang mga underline. Just be familiar with it. Okay. Vicky has a question. Sorry, Vicky, this is for yung last um this is for the the last one. Yung example. Ay, sorry. Do we double it to get equity? Yes. Oh, correct. Tama yun. Tama yun. Tama yung question mo, Vicky. Yeah. There. So, now that we're clear, so assets plus liabilities is equal to equity. Um, The next step is, medyo, let's make it a bit more complicated. So, I want us to forget assets and liabilities for a bit and let's focus on equity. Kasi out of the three, si equity yung pinaka maarte when it comes to things. So, si equity can be broken down into two components. Owner's capital, meaning kung ano yung in-invest ng owners, and owner's drawings. So, kung kumuha ka ng pera. So, positive si owner's capital, negative si owner's drawings. So, equity, from equity, let's break it down to owner's capital and owner's drawings. So, owner's capital, positive, owner's drawings, negative. Next, yung owner's capital can be broken down into three. Yung owner's capital na nag-invest ka, your income, and your revenue or your expense. So basically, your owner's capital can also be revenue minus expense is equal to net income or net loss. So paano nagkakaroon ng net income? When your revenue is higher than your expense, net income. So 100 yung revenue ko, 75 yung expense. I have a net income of 25. If I have a revenue of 100 pero my expense is 200, 100 minus 200 is negative 100. That is a net loss. So basically, may mga strict definitions ng revenues. Um, I'll go back to that next lecture. But in essence, ang importante lang is that the difference between the income and the expenses is your net income or your net loss. So if revenue is higher, it's net income. That's a positive increase in your equity. If it's expenses are uh, if the revenue is less than ex expenses, then that's a net loss. So baba ba yung equity. So now we'll be able to expand the account equation. So from equity, we break down that into owner's capital and owner's drawings. Now, your owner's capital, we break it down into three. Owner's capital, kung ano invest plus revenue, kung ano yung mga parang uh, things that will be able to generate you different revenues, like sales, minus expenses, anything that you pinagastosan mo. So the full expanded, uh, so pwede pa natin, another formula is, Pwede nyo ipag-combine yung revenues and expenses. Gagawin nyo plus net income or minus net loss. But out of all of those iterations, ang pinaka-importante is that we have two types of equations. You have your basic accounting equation. Assets is equal to liabilities plus equity. But the, the parang hardcore version of that or the expanded accounting equation is assets is equal to liabilities 
plus owner's capital, kung ano yung in-invest, plus revenue, minus expense, minus owner drawings, yung kinuha ng owner from the business. Is everything clear so far? Parang kindly thumbs up if everything is clear. Okay. So, good. We're good pa naman so far. So now, let's go and analyze business transaction. So again, a transaction again is an economic event that can be recorded externally, internally. But I want us to focus na on to our first case study, which is Macy Consulting. So itong mga to are dates, May 1 to May 30. She started um a consulting firm at May 1, 2020. And then, ang kailangan natin gawin is that through these economic events, we do what we call our first ever framework, our basic transaction analysis, and our advanced transaction analysis. So first is first step is let's break it down per economic event. So now in the chat, under each economic event, I just want you to indicate A for assets, L for liabilities, E for equity, and then I'll say A increase, a decrease, L increase, L decrease, E increase, E decrease. Right? So, let's analyze it together. Number one, Macy invested 7,000 cash in the business. What would be the effect in terms of... So, dalawa. So, ano yung dalawang components? Right? So, let's break it down. 7,000 cash. Ah, parang nakita ko yung sa slide. Cash is an asset. So, tumaas. Right? Tumaas. Si asset. Then, what else did increase? Yung investment natin. So, A and E increases. So, as you can see, if you split the accounting equation into two sides, assets on one side, liabilities and equity on one side, assets, tumaas, equity, tumaas. So, balance pa siya. Next, paid 900 for office rent. Paid 900. What is that? Since nagbayad ka ng cash, that should be a what? A decrease in your asset. But then, what should that be? Saan yung rent expense? Expense is a component of equity na pinapababa niya yung equity. So, bumaba si assets, Bumaba si equity. Okay. Next, purchase 800 supplies on account. So again, nagbumili ka, right? On account. So what does on account mean? Meaning, hindi ka gumamit ng pera. Ang ginamit mo is hindi ka pa nagbayad pero may utang ka pa lang. So what would that entail? So syempre, tataas yung supplies. Supplies is an asset. Pero, nagkakaroon ka ng liability. Kailangan mong, bawa, uh, kailangan mong bayaran. So, increase the asset, increase the liability. Next, paid 125 to advertise in country news. Nagbayad ka. So again, bumaba si asset. Now, advertise. Ano yun? That is a advertising expense. So, nagbayad ka ng 125, so decrease in asset, decrease in ex uh, equity because that is a, a equity, right? So, basically, ganun lang yung gagawin natin for the next few transactions. Next, um, received 4,000 cash for services performed. So, again, cash, asset. Tumaas yung cash natin. So, asset increase. What is services performed? That means mayroon kang service revenue. Meaning, increase asset, increase equity. Withdrew 1,000 cash for personal use. Huh, withdrew. Parang that reminds me of owner's drawings. So anong gagawin ng owner's drawings? I-decrease niya si um, equity and basically, mabababa yung cash ng business. Kasi kinuhanan mo eh. So, decrease asset, decrease equity. Performed 6,400 of services on account. Ah, services. That service revenue. So, automatic, tataas si equity. Now, the question is, ano yung other thing na tataas? Hindi cash, kasi on account. Since on account, ang tataas is 
accounts receivable. So, increase asset, increase equity. Right? Next, May 17, paid 2,500 for employee salaries. So, nagpay ka in cash, so decrease asset. Employee salaries are employee salary expense. So, bababa si equity. So, bababa si asset, bababa si equity. Bought shoes using cash withdrawn on May 12. So, eto, um, sorry, medyo mabilis yung pace. Want to ask kung ano yung sa tingin niyo, what should be the entry for this one? For May 18. Okay. Yeah, good. So, I think I see na it's not to be recorded because it's personal money. Wala, kay, wala tayong pakialam kung ano yung ginawa ni owner, right? So, last five, paid 600 for supplies. So, nagbayad ka ng supplies purchased on May 3. So, titingnan natin si May 3. Ah, doon yung nagkaroon tayo ng liability. So, now, ang sinasabi nun, binayaran mo na yung utang mo nung May 3. So, syempre, bumaba yung liability mo kasi babayaran mo na. And then, pero bababa yung cash mo. Kasi, baba, bababa yung cash. So, receive 4,000 for May 15 services on account. So, ano mangyayari? Let's go back to May 15. Nag-perform ka, ah, ito yung may accounts receivable ka. So, ang sinasabi lang is, yung accounts receivable mo of 6,400 na hindi mo pa nakuha in cash, nakuha mo na ngayon in cash. So, ano mangyayari for May 23? In May 23, tataas yung cash account mo, pero bababa yung accounts receivable mo. Kasi wala ka nang i-expect na money. So, ang answer di here is, asset increases, but it also decreases. Because tumaas si cash, pero bumaba si receivable. Um, last three, borrowed 5,000 from bank on a notes payable. So, nag-borrow ka from bank, so tumaas yung cash, pero tumaas rin yung liability mo. Right? So, assets increase, liabilities increase. And then, you purchase equipment on account, assets increase, kasi yung equipment, and then on account, may utang ka na naman, so liabilities increase. And then finally, you paid 275 for utilities, so bababa siya to um, assets and equity. So with that said, that's the basic transaction analysis. Now, ang advanced transaction analysis is i-expound lang natin si assets and si liabilities and si equity. So yung assets, you have your cash, your receivable, your supplies, your equipment, and then your accounts payable, notes payable for liabilities. And then you have your equity, owner's draw capital, owner's drawings, and then you have your revenues and your expenses. So for this, papasadahan lang natin siya one by one. So invested 7,000 in cash. So again, that's 7,000 in cash, pero meron ka owner's capital, right? Paid 900 for office rent, bababa, so negative 900, pero bababa rin si expense, so negative 900. Purchased 800 of supplies on account. So basically, on account, so ang accounts payable mo yung tumaas, 800, supplies 800. Paid 125 to advertise and country news, so nagpay ka, so minus cash, and then my expense of 125. So, kindly note na for expenses and owner's drawings, palagi yung negative dapat, right? So, palagi yung negative to. Um, and then, receive 4,000 in cash for services performed. So, basically, that's a cash and revenue. Withdrew 1,000 cash. So, basically, minus cash and then owner's drawings. Performed 6,400 on services. So, nagkaroon ka ng receivable kasi on account. And then my revenue ka of 6,400. Paid 2,500 for employee salary. So basically, ang nangyari is, nababa si cash, pero si expense ay nagkaroon ka na expense. Bought shoes, walang effect because it's a, a personal event. Paid 600 of supplies. So negative 600 and then negative 600. And then borrowed 5,000 from bank on a note payable. Um, So, yun. I sorry, receive 4,000 for services performed. So basically, itong 6,400, a portion of it was paid off. So 4,000 bumaba si receivable, pero si cash now umangkat ng 4,000. Kasi receive mo na yung cash eh. Um, May 26, um, you borrowed from bank. So that's cash, notes payable. And then purchase equipment. 
So basically, ito kasi equipment mo, pero on account, so 4,200. And then, paid um expense in cash at 275 for the utilities. So the next step is, after yung, so basically, increase, decrease lang naman yan, pero you, we added lang the categories. The next step is for us to subtotal this. So ano yung subtotal ng cash? So if you add all of those together, that's 14,600. If you add those, 2,400. 800 of supplies, and then 4,200 of equipment. And then you have accounts payable, a 4, 4, 5,000, and then 7,000, one, negative 1,000, 10,400, and then 3,800 negative. And then when you add all of these together, so let's add it. So 14,600 plus 2,400, sorry, 2,400 plus 800 plus 4,200 is 22,000. So, yung asset natin is 22,000. Now, let's compute for our liabilities. 4,400 plus 5,000 is 9,400. And then the other is 12,600. So, how did we get 12,600? Seven thousand plus uh sorry minus one thousand of drawings plus ten thousand four hundred minus three eight is twelve thousand six hundred plus so liabilities plus equity nine thousand four hundred so twenty two thousand so nagbalance ba yes. 22,000 assets is equal to 22,000 of liabilities and equity. So lastly is we prepare financial statements. Um, but for this particular um, discussion, since I think major informational overload na right now, what I'll do is I'll upload um, a recording over the week uh, up on the day. So same day I'll upload so that it will help you for your exercises. So not as to eat your time. So before I end, um, are there any questions for advanced transaction analysis? So, nagets nyo ba na parang per line item, ang kilangan lang natin is i-categorize lang natin ano ba yung mga accounts that are affected and then ilalagay lang natin yung mon monetary unit. So, that's step one. So, gagawin natin yan for all of the events. Step two is you create the subtotals for each and then you total the assets, the liabilities, and the equ equity. So we go back to our simple accounting equation. And then your check figure is your assets should be equal to your liabilities and your equity. Are there any questions um, before I end today's class? So um, don't worry, I'll upload it na today. Um, yeah, go Ale. Hello, sir. Am I audible? Po? Yes, yes. And sir, yung sa page 3 po ata, ito nung sa exercise po na binigay niyo po sa amin. Kasi po, may example. Okay po. Okay, okay na po. Sorry. Go ahead. Yung sa page 3 po kasi nun, may example tabular analysis po. Pero dun sa, sa, num sa number 3 po, tapos sa number 5 po kasi, may, uh, may prepaid rent. Po, tapos may advertising cost. Pero wala po siya dun sa uh, example tabular analysis. Balik kami po yung maggagawa. Like, kinadagdag po namin yung sa ano, assets. Sige. Thank you so much for this. Um, number three? Page the three po. Ah, ah here, here, here. Ah, okay. And then, um... yung may ano po kasi sir, advertising ah. cost. Tapos ah, happy pay na rent po. So parang rented out an office. Ito. This one. Okay. So for this, parang yes. So example lang yung table na to. But then the idea is for you to create um parang the different uh, prepaid rent 
um information for this oh mm-hmm. correct so what apparently this is just yung um your guide pero you can add assets you can add liabilities pero roughly um ito yung format na gagawin natin so similar lang to dun sa advanced transaction analysis na we'll discuss in class yeah but thank you so much for the um question mm-hmm. Meron pa po, sir. Sorry po. Ah, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, I, I don't know po kung natanong na po kanina, pero kasi naglalag po kasi ako kanina. Uh, since we're going in na po sa accounting uh, process po, kakailangan niyo po ba namin ng ledger, journal, tapos kolom- columnar tables po, yung papel po mismo. Tapos po, for the calculator, kailangan po ba calculator or pwede, or it will allow us na mag-calculate po sa phone? Ah, okay, okay. So, really good question. So, number one, um, kailangan nyo ba yung parang mga columnar? Honestly, in terms of sheets, you only need, um, you only need yellow pad. For a calculator, it has to be, uh, an actual calculator bawal phone. Especially for exams. Yun. Mm-hmm. Yung calculator cycle or yung pang, ano, yung calculator. Pwedeng, okay. pwedeng paleng, pwedeng paleng kay calculator. Um, and um pwedeng cal- p- pwedeng palengke calculator pwedeng um cycle sorry palengke calculator yung ginagamit ko na parang yung simple lang yeah uh, and then sorry so for this um just to answer your question also um definitely parang you can try pero ang hint ko na sa inyo is that ito ito talaga yung table na you use so sorry naka-flash naman yung exercise right so this is a uh, parang just to help you out. This is a rent expense. So this should be technically under here. Yun. So uh, a hint na lang for the exercise. Yeah. I think there. Other questions. Uh Trish? Yeah. Uh hi sir. Um may I clarify lang po uh, regarding the only takes. Uh, so for the quiz po, we can keep uh taking it until the highest grade uh, for the pdf submission for the handwritten solution um if we submit po will we receive feedback for the version we submitted then we can make changes um so okay to set expectations so number one the reason why i set up the check figures is so that i'm hoping yun yung fig yung feedback niyo kung parang tam- you're in the right process or not para lang alam niyo kung ano yung item na hirapan kayo so that's one Number two for the handwritten, the feedback technically will be how we'll discuss it. So next lecture, next next lecture, yung sa Wednesday natin, pag-usapan natin how to answer it step by step. So that would be the feedback. Um, and then parang kung mayroong any particular questions, please ask there. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Alright, sir. Thank you for. So there. So I think I think if there are no more um questions, I will end the call now. Please check Uble. Sorry, last is my Uble ba lahat? If not, I will email the YouTube link. So after this, I'll talk for another 30 minutes Um, for the parang financial statements. I understand the advanced, advanced transaction analysis was a bit fast. So I'll start from there again. Himayin ko ulit para lang clear ulit. And then I'll do financial statements. Please watch it in your own time. 30 minutes. It will help you answer your exercises. Um, with that said, thank you so much, everyone. Um, sorry, a bit fast kasi lang we had housekeeping. Um, so poor time management on my end. Uh, I'll try to be better also at pacing. But um, ideally wanted to end lang. Um, I hope you have a great day. Happy weekend. Um, Thanks, sir. Ingat kayo traffic raw sa Quezon City because of the bar. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye. Bye.